When I see made in China, I see the hands of Uyghur slaves. That's why Chinese products are cheap. Nobody can compete with free labor. It's a business for China. My name is Kuzat Altai, and this is my story. I'm a refugee from China, and I'm a US citizen, and I'm a father of four. We're Turkic Uyghur Muslims. When I say I'm from China, many people might think that I'm Chinese. There's an interesting differentiation between how China describes our land and we describe our land. In 1949, when Chinese army invaded my land, which we call East Turkestan, they gave us a name called Xinjiang. Xinjiang means new territory. I would say Chinese Communist Party was very, very patient on increasing their oppression against Uyghur people. First, they attacked our language and the culture. Learning our history was forbidden in China. There is no freedom of religion, no freedom of expression. And they have been trying for 70 years to erase the culture, the language, the identity of Uyghur people. When I was a kid, my parents got divorced. I grew up with my dad and we were very close. He was very smart and decent human being. Because my family was oppressed by Chinese Communist Party, my parents, they were not religious at all. Whoever believe in God, there's punishment. So they closed all the mosques and uh, burned all the Qurans. Right now in China, not only Islam, Christianity is also crime. The only religion that you can have is the communist ideology, and the only God that you can have is Chinese Communist Party. My aunt, she was one of the most wealthiest person in China in the 1990s. She wanted to speak up against Chinese Communist Party, against one-child policy, because she said it's against our faith to have abortion. She was outspoken, and she was taken to the prison. After six years in jail, that I believe, she was rescued by Bush administration. So from the jail cell, she directly came to Washington, D.C. So one day, my aunt calls me from the United States. He's like, if you come to the United States, I'm going to send you to Harvard. I came to the United States as a refugee. No English, no money, no college degree. <laughs> my aunt, she didn't send me to Harvard, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I couldn't go to even community college. My first job, I was dishwasher. And I was so happy when I was <laughs> upon my first job. And then I worked in the restaurant. I worked in the grocery store. I delivered package. And because I couldn't afford to go to school, I learned coding. And I got into IT job and I tripled my salary. Knowledge is a destination. College, university is a vehicle. We should create more vehicles to acquire knowledge and the skill set. And I am part of that because after working for a few years, I started a tech education company, a coding bootcamp, and it just took off. In under a year, we're teaching them a skill set, they work. Still today, I love what I do because when I see a refugee like me triple their salary, it makes me happy. In 2018, it was the first time I was so happy of my life because I made it in the United States. And I was sending some money to my dad because he was not working anymore. I think it was February, my dad sends me a message, son, they're taking me. And that was, that was it. And he's disappeared. He disappears for one month, two months, three months. I was like, what the hell's going on? So I started asking for the Uyghur community to start paying attention. And one time we gathered, it was around 300 people because we wanted to know what's happening. I said, hey guys, raise your hand if someone from your family disappeared. Everyone raised their hand in the room. Everybody that I know internationally, whether Uyghurs in Europe, Uyghurs in the United States or Canada, everybody's saying, my family's missing. My dad is missing. My sister's missing. That means something going on in there. China is very, very closed society. And recently, one of the Chinese officials mentioned the final solution is putting us to the concentration camp. We had satellite images that were showing mass infrastructures that was like a jail with the watchtowers, things like that. And according to the witnesses, there's mass sterilization of women and men, organ harvesting, raping, slave labor, China is committing genocide against Uyghur people. So many Uyghurs are going through this in the world. I am the luckiest one because I can speak up. 
And because I spoke up in the United States of America, later on I became the president of the Uyghur American Association. So I was advocating for Uyghur human rights as well as the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. So my dad was in the concentration camp for more than two years. And one time, my friend sent me a text message. He's like, hey, take a look. Is this your dad? I think it was a Chinese state media. And he's like, my name is Mehmet Qadir. I am the father of Kuzad al Qai, the president of Uyghur American Association. Son, stop doing what you're doing. I want you to stop speaking. Otherwise, I will denounce you from being my son. And after two years, you see your dad on the Chinese national TV denouncing you. It's heartbreaking. They started dividing Uyghurs to two in the concentration camps. Like one side is like the ones that they have kids overseas. They were the luckier one because they were saved. So they released my dad and those voiceless, have nobody speaking up for them. They're still getting killed. They're still getting organ harvested. They're still being slave. They can wipe out the entire village. The world would not know because nobody will speak up for them. My dad knows that I will fight for him. So I still advocate for my people. I will not stop. When I see Made in China, I see the hands of Uyghur slaves. I see the blood of the Uyghur slaves. That's why Chinese products are cheap, so nobody can compete with free labor. Nobody. It's a business for China. American companies keep buying from China. They keep selling in China. We empowered China. In the time of Bill Clinton, they brought China to World Trade Organization, hoping that when Chinese making more money, they're going to start loving our political system and our ideologies. What happened? We empowered a monster. The Chinese Communist Party, since its inception, they killed more people than any other political organization in the world. Hopefully one day, the Chinese Communist Party will be replaced by a decent government who will believe in freedom, democracy, and all the good values that we believe. Otherwise, I think the oppression will continue in China against Chinese people, against Uyghur people, against anyone other than Xi Jinping and his family and his Communist Party. China is invading America ideologically. It's not a conventional war. It's a psychological warfare. It is ideological warfare. The way that China will take us down is not with weapons. It's about corrupting our society. China is, without firing a single bullet, invading America, using their business tie with the companies they can push their ideologies in the Congress, in our schools, I believe the Vogue agenda is orchestrated by China because in China, they want you to focus on loving China, learning the science, beating Americans. In the United States, they're pushing stupid agendas using TikTok. In that sense, China is very dangerous to the United States of America. If we're not aware of the Chinese ideological war in the United States, we're not gonna win this war. The country that I was born in wants to kill me want to kill my family. You know, I came to United States as an immigrant, as a refugee, I started a business. I am successful. I have freedom, I have liberty. I don't have to worry that I'll be taken to the concentration camp one day. I don't worry about my kids and they will be taken to the concentration camp one day. Americans, especially today, the younger generation, they don't understand the feeling of not having freedom. That is why they take it for granted, just like we're breathing right now. We don't even know that we have oxygen. We are not aware of it. But when you take it away, you will be choked and you will die. We are with our own hands destroying this nation. We're helping China. We're helping our enemies. And when I look at the world, Russia, China, I don't want none of these countries to lead the world. America is the only country who qualifies to be leader of the world. And I cannot imagine when America is not superpower, what will happen to this world. And I want Americans to understand we cannot take our freedom for granted. That's why I want to fight for America. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.